This is Dan, and this is the Napkin Academy. This lesson is the 6 by 6 rule. This is going to be the summary of just about everything we've learned up to this point, and we're going to represent the 6 by 6 rule as a circle sliced up into six slices just like a pizza. Now what's important about the 6x6 six six rule is I have mentioned all along that there is a way that is that we can come up with a simple picture to describe any idea that we can have. That simple picture is going to be guided by the 6x6 six six rule. The way we start out by drawing our 6x6 six six rule, and as usual I'd like you to go ahead and draw with me, the way we begin every problem solving picture is we draw a little circle and we give it a name. In this case I'd like you to call it me. When we start out drawing a picture we do not think oh what am I going to draw? We do not think oh I can't draw. We've been through this before. We already know. We start out with a circle and we give it a name and in this particular case the name is me so for a little extra credit let's go ahead and make it look a little bit like us. Now we're going to draw the 6 by 6 rule so let's draw a big circle take up a substantial amount of our piece of paper. See if you can make one about that big. And this circle needs a label too. And for the time being, we're going to call this one my problem. Now, what the various things that we've talked about so far, including the six-dimensional coordinate system and the six types of pictures that we can see, the six ways that we see. We're going to combine them and say that from now on, when we want to visually describe a problem, we're going to do it by working our way through the 6x6 six six rule, and here's the way it's going to go. We do not see our problem all as one piece. We're going to follow a little bit of the neurobiology we talked about a moment before. We're going to divide that problem up into six slices. And the first slice we're literally going to call who and what. As we recall, this was our what pathway. This is the part of our mind that sees who we're looking at, what kind of objects we're looking at. We literally see the things of the world around us. And we are going to call that kind of a picture a portrait. The second slice we're going to label as how much. The next way we see the world and the picture that we're going to draw to describe how much the numbers of things that we see in the world is we are going to draw a visual representation of number otherwise known as a chart. The third slice we'll remember is where where are the pieces located within my idea or within my problem? And we can think about this is I could tell you that this, for example, is my house. And here's a river that runs in front of my house. And across the river, there is some buried treasure. And I could even further draw on this the path that shows the spatial relationship, the where relationship between my house and that buried treasure. And what kind of a picture is that? The picture that we would draw when we want to describe where something is? It's called a map. The fourth slice, as we know, is called when. This happened, then this happened, then this happened in this particular sequence. The picture that I draw when I want to describe when things happened is a timeline. Slice number five, combining everything we've seen up to this point, is a big one. Slice number five is how. How does everything that I just saw take place react in terms of cause and effect? What took place that caused some other thing to take place, which caused some other thing to take place? The picture that I draw when I want to describe how things worked out is called a flowchart. 
And if I add that one together many, many times, cause and effect many, many times, I see, I come up with the sixth slice, which is called Y. The summary of everything else. And the picture that I would draw when I want to describe why things are the way they are is what we're going to call a plot. And what I mean by that is it is a multi-dimensional coordinate system into which we can plot all kinds of different information and look at the impact they have upon each other to ultimately summarize everything we've seen before and come up with the real reason why. Now what we see here are nothing more than the six types of simple pictures that we need how to learn to draw the six pictures that by themselves individually and later on in combination are going to allow us to illustrate to visually describe any idea that we can have we're going to know how to draw portraits we're going to know how to draw charts we're going to know how to draw maps we're going to know how to draw timelines we're going to know how to draw flowcharts and we're going to know how to draw plots and there will be nothing more really that we're going to need to learn how to draw to describe any idea so let's summarize really quickly this is the most I'm gonna just write it down this is the most important tool we are ever going to have in visual thinking. The six by six rule, let's go through it quickly one more time in summary. Our pizza, our problem, our six slices, here we go. Who and what gives us a portrait? How much we draw a chart? Where we draw a map? When? we draw a timeline how we draw a flow chart why why oh why we draw a plot those simple six pictures everything we're ever going to need to know to visually describe anything